Aloha, it's Dr. Johnson, and I want to talk a little bit about holidays in the classroom, something that you are going to experience as an elementary school teacher. And I want to give you some skills and some background that will let you be an effective classroom teacher while still celebrating holidays. Now to get started, let's think about the holidays you remember as an elementary student. Write these down or get them in your head. Uh, if you need to, pause the video for just a moment. What holidays do you remember? Now, the holidays you remember are going to be very dependent on a few different things. First of all, what nation you're from. Holidays are very nationally based. They could also be very regionally based. You might have celebrated some holidays that are just localized to your region rather than your country. So the holidays you remember are going to be very different. So the advice I'm going to give you today can apply to just about any holiday that you are going to be celebrating anywhere in the world. Now holidays are a lot like culture. Like culture, there's a lot going on with holidays. They're very complex. The history of them, the, the meaning behind them, how we celebrate them, the religious background of them. So it's a lot like the cultural iceberg. And because of that, holidays also get really oversimplified. Like you see the holidays around the world book, you know, oversimplification. If you're from Asia, the, the winter holiday is New Year's, uh, Chinese New Year. If you're Jewish, it's Hanukkah. If you're African American, it's Kwanzaa. There's a lot of oversimplification that goes uh, from these holidays, and we want to avoid that. So let's take a look at my three rules for holidays in the classroom. Rules that you can apply to any holiday in any nation. All right, first rule, consider every student. And why every student, I mean students with medical issues, students with food allergies and other issues, and students with different cultural and religious backgrounds. So medical conditions. One of the most common one is diabetes. I was a diabetic, was diagnosed when I turned eight. The problem with me in the classroom was every holiday was celebrated with candy. And candy for me was really unhealthy and actually could make me quite sick. But it was always there. There was never alternatives for me. My teachers didn't consider me as a medical issue. It was just kind of, don't eat the candy. Don't eat the candy. But as you know, for an eight or nine year old, that's really hard. So think about the medical conditions that your students might have and how you can accommodate those medical conditions as you celebrate holidays. Second uh, type of one are the food issues. Students with food allergies, they're allergic to gluten, they're allergic to milk and dairy, they're allergic to corn. It's really hard to plan a holiday party where there's a lot of food going on when you have students like this. So my advice is get the parents involved. Get the parents of the students with the allergies involved. They will plan a great meal, a great, you know, treats and whatever you want at your party. And they'll have food for both the students with allergies as well as all the other students. They will make sure it gets done because they're very aware of their child who has these issues and all the other children. They want to make sure that all the students are happy. Third type of student are the differences in culture and religion. And really for this one, this is the epitome of consider every student. When you look at your students, their backgrounds, their cultures, their religions, you'll start to know which holidays are appropriate to celebrate, which holidays have problems and concerns you need to be aware of, and which ones you might want to celebrate that you hadn't considered before based off of the students that are in your class. Rule number one, consider every student. Uh, rule number two is looking at the big picture. I'm going to use the example of Thanksgiving. The big picture of Thanksgiving is it started in 1621 where the Puritans and the Native American Wampong tribe got together over a shared meal and celebrated this blessed new land that they were in. But the big picture hides many problems, just like this painting hides many problems. It gets converted into issues in the classroom. So here's a very traditional Thanksgiving celebration and we have some cultural issues with the Native American headgear and costuming. Really a lot of cultural insensitivity there. We have some historical inaccuracy. We have all of the pilgrims dressed in black and white. Well, the pilgrims historically didn't dress in black and white. They had a wide variety of very colorful clothing. Um, a lot of problems with the, with the traditional Thanksgiving and how it gets converted into the 
elementary classroom. So what you need to do as a teacher, you need to go out and look at the big picture. You need to find out what the history of Thanksgiving is. You need to find out why it's celebrated on the fourth Thursday in November. You may not realize that Thanksgiving really only became a national holiday in 1941 when Congress declared it as a national holiday on the, on the fourth Thursday. Uh, you might not be aware of Sarah Hill who petitioned Abraham Lincoln for Thanksgiving to be a national holiday. And in response, Abraham Lincoln uh, proclaimed two national days of Thanksgiving, one in April to honor the dead that had been killed at the Battle of Gettysburg during the U.S. Civil War, and one in the last Thursday of November for the nation to give thanks for what they were provided. You may not know that turkey was not a traditional Thanksgiving feast until Sarah Hill wrote it in a book and people thought oh that's really clever let's start buying turkeys and you may not even know that it was the Turkey Growers Association that really promoted turkey as the Thanksgiving food during the Great Depression so when you look at the big picture bring in other literature that brings in the whole story not just the traditional story which is often flawed both historically and culturally here are two great books on Thanksgiving thank you Sarah and 1621 a new look at thanksgiving so rule number two look at the at the big picture rule number one consider every student and rule number three integrate if you're going to celebrate holidays celebrate holidays oftentimes we only celebrate christmas in u.s schools in december and i think that's so bad because there are so many other days that you could celebrate like day on december 21st humbug day on december 12th gingerbread day there are just a lot of other days you could celebrate. Of course, we're not going to celebrate Logger Day in the elementary classroom. Not, not appropriate. But look at all holidays. And not only look at all holidays, but try to integrate them into your curriculum. For instance, in the month of November, which is Halloween, instead of having a Halloween party, we had a mystery party. Because my students for the entire month of November had read a mystery book that they chose. They had not told anyone what book they were reading, just that they were reading a mystery novel. And on the day of uh, Halloween, they came in dressed as a character from their book with a box that had clues about what their book was. And while they were all outside at recess, I set out all of their books on one table and labeled them A, B, C, D, all of their boxes on another table and labeled them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then when they all came back in the classroom, our party was for them to be detectives and figure out which person was associated with which book and which box. So they had to look at the clues. They had to look at the people. And kind of a fun mystery party that we had. And that was all integrated into my language arts curriculum. So think about integrating holidays, integrating the history of holidays, integrating the celebration of them in other areas, and also, I guess, integrating different holidays that you might not normally celebrate. So once again, remember, holidays have a lot of depth. Three things can help you out. Remember to consider every student. Remember to look at the big picture, and remember to integrate. And if you do that, your holidays will be successful in your classroom.